Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over how to use Newton's second law to calculate the acceleration of an object that's moving across the surface, and there's no friction between the object and the surface, and there's a force that is applied to the object, and the force is applied at an angle above the horizon. Okay, so here's the situation we have. It's a rightward force of 15 Newtons. It's applied 35 degrees above the horizontal. There's an object, a box in this case. It's 6 uh, kilograms. It's moving across a smooth surface, says the coefficient of friction is zero, so there's no friction. And we want to label all the forces. We're going to calculate the magnitude of the forces. And what we really want to do is be able to calculate the acceleration of the object. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw and label all the forces that are acting on the object. Okay? I think it's the first thing to do. Get yourself situated with this problem here. Think about it a little bit. The first force is the force of gravity. It points straight downwards. The next force is the normal force. The box is not falling through the floor or through the surface, so there must be a force applied by the surface onto the box. That's the normal force. Okay, now it says that there is an applied force, and the applied force is 35 degrees above the horizontal. So I just drew this line in here. This is my horizontal line. That tells me that the box is, the angle is 35 degrees. The force is um, the applied force. We're told it's 15 newtons, so I just wrote it in there like that. And that, just for emphasis, that's the angle. And that angle is 35 degrees. Okay? Now, we're going to have to, for the normal force and for calculating the actual acceleration, we have to break this force, the applied force, into its component vectors. Okay? So we're going to decompose the applied force into the x component. So this is the part of the applied force that acts in the x direction. And this is the applied force, the part of the applied force, or the component of the applied force that acts in the y direction. We're going to decompose that. This box is moving across the surface. So for the acceleration, we need to know the force that acts in the x direction. And also to get the normal force, because we're pulling up partly, we're going to have to use the FAY to figure out the normal force. Okay? Now I think the first thing to do, just get it out of the way, because the gravitational force is always FG equals mg is just to calculate the gravitational force. Okay, so we get the gravitational force is mg, which is the mass of the object, times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second on Earth, and we get that the uh, gravitation or the weight of the object is 58.6 newtons. So I'm going to write that right down there. Now, you might be tempted to fill in 58.6 newtons for the normal force, but we have an applied force that's applied at an angle. And when you have an applied force that's applied at an angle, the gravitational force and the normal force are not going to be equal and opposite. So the normal force is not going to be equal but opposite in uh, sign to the gravitational force. This applied force has a component in the x direction and a component in the y direction. So when you pull something at an angle, you're actually pulling it up and lifting it up a little bit. Okay, and we have to take that into account when we calculate the, um, the normal force. Okay, the weight of the object doesn't change, but the normal force is not going to be the same as the weight of the object, okay, because we're pulling at an angle. So we need to calculate FAY and FAX. We have um, a 35 degree angle here. We have a right triangle. So we have a right triangle. We know one of the angles. We know this side is 15 newtons long. And therefore, we can use our trig functions, sine and cosine, to ca calculate the other sides, the other legs of this right triangle. The sine, as you know, is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Here's the angle. Here's the opposite side. So we're going to calculate FAY first. Okay? So the opposite side is FAY. The hypotenuse is the applied force. So I'm going to switch those in so I can use those kind of for this real situation here. And then we're going to solve for FAY. We get FAY is the sine of theta times FA. And that tells us that it's going to be the sine of 35 times 15 newtons. And therefore, the applied force, the component of the applied force that acts in the y direction is 8.6 newtons. Okay, now we're going to do the FAX, the component of the applied force that acts in the x direction. We're going to use our cosine. A cosine is the adjacent times the hypotenuse. Well, in this case, the adjacent angle, here's the angle again, 35 degrees, adjacent to that is FAX. The hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse. So we're going to write FA in for the hypotenuse. We're going to solve for FAX, the x component of the applied force, which is going to be the cosine of 35 times 15. 12.29 newtons, and therefore that component 
is 12.29 newtons. Now, I'm going to cross off the 15 newtons. Not because we're getting rid of the applied force or not because it goes to zero, but we're not going to use it now because we're going to use the components. Okay, we're going to use the components instead of the, uh, the whole applied force. So we're going to use the x component and the y component to solve the rest of the problem. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the normal force. Well, we're going to use the sum of the forces in the y direction. It's going to equal, this is the sum of the forces in the y direction. It's going to equal the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Well, you have to remember in this case, the object is moving to the right. We're not lifting it up, right? It has a 58... 0.6 Newton weight and we're only applying an upward force with our applied force of 8.6 so we're not lifting it up so we're going to um, say that the acceleration therefore is zero okay so the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero this is the sum of the forces in the y direction equals the acceleration in the y direction all right so we know that the sum of the forces now here we add up the forces we have the normal force pointing up we're going to call that the, po the positive direction in the y, the y component of the applied force is pointing up, so that's a positive. So this is positive, um, the normal force, plus Fay, and then the weight pulls downwards, okay? And that means that we have minus Fg. Now we're going to solve this for Fn. We're going to move the Fay and the Fg to the other side, so this becomes positive, the Fay becomes negative, and Fn equals Fg minus Fay. Now, let's just look at the problem and see if that actually makes sense. This normal force is equal to the weight of the object minus the amount that we're pulling up. This surface is not applying a force that's 58.6 newtons. It's applying 58.6 minus the component of the y direction that we're pulling up. This part of the, uh, the applied force, the y component of the, y, of the applied force, is actually lifting the box up a little bit and making the normal force less. It makes the floor or that surface have to push not as hard, okay? So then we can solve that. We can put 58.6 minus Fay, which is the Y component of the applied force, 8.6 newtons, and we come up with the normal force is 50 newtons, okay? Just think of it, if you pull this box up a little bit, you release, you make the normal force a little less, even though you might not be lifting it off the surface. Okay, so that means that the normal force is 50.0 50 50 newtons. Okay, now we have all the forces labeled. We drew all the forces. We found the components of the applied force. We found all the other forces, the magnitudes, and now we can calculate the acceleration. Okay, so here's our diagram again with all the forces labeled. Get rid of all those equations and make it look a little cleaner. Now we can use Newton's second law, sum of the forces equals ma and we can find the acceleration of the object in the x direction so we're going to solve for the acceleration the acceleration is sum of the forces over m now let's just think about it what forces are acting in the x direction which forces affect the acceleration well there's only one force because the normal force acts in the y direction the weight force the gravitational force acts in the y direction the applied force uh, uh, the y component of the applied force acts in the y direction we decompose the applied force, so we're not going to use this force anymore. So the only one left, really, is the applied force or the component of the applied force in the x direction. 12.29 divided by the mass of 6, and you come up with an acceleration that is 2.04 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's the acceleration of the object. Um, we found, we drew the forces, we found the magnitude of all the forces, we decomposed the applied force, we found the components, the magnitude of the components of the applied force, and then we used all that information to get the acceleration of the object, okay? So um, I hope you found that helpful. If you did, and uh, you can leave me a thumbs up in the comment section or leave me a comment below. And uh, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next time.